Hey everybody, in this video, we're gonna break down the shipping strategy options you have for combination listings using Printify. All right, so hopefully you've seen my videos about creating combination listings using Printify on Etsy. If you haven't, I will link to a couple in the description. I've got a couple out there based on what type of products uh, that you're trying to combine. And the explanation process for how to do that takes a little while. So in those videos, I don't really go into a great amount of detail about your shipping strategy for those types of listings because otherwise those videos would be very long. I'm gonna show you exactly what I would do to figure out how much to charge for shipping versus doing free shipping. There's also a Dropbox link down in the description to the exact Excel file that I'm going to use to illustrate this. All right, so we're gonna use the apparel example here because I think that's probably the best example that everybody can relate to. If you wanna create combination listings, you've probably thought about offering more than one type of apparel in a listing. So I'm gonna do t-shirt, sweatshirt, and hoodie. Same exact process no matter what product products you're combining though. The first thing we need to do is we need to go to Printify's catalog and we need to figure out how much we're gonna actually pay for shipping for each of the products that we're putting in our combination listing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take a look at the t-shirt listing and we're gonna pretend that I am using the Gildan 64,000 or soft style t-shirt from Monster Digital. So let's take a look at Monster Digital. We're gonna open up the more details. We need to get both the product price and the shipping price. Shipping price will be same for everybody. If you don't have Printify Premium, then you're looking at the regular price. If you have Printify Premium, of course, you're looking at that price. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab my product price. Now I'm gonna base this off of the price for small to XL, the, the lowest price basically, because that's the price that shows in search results. That's what I base my profit margin on. And then I just add a couple dollars to the 2XL and 3XL size. So 778 is what I care about here. That is my price for small to XL. Now I'm gonna bring up my spreadsheet here and I have columns identified, the colored in the yellow columns here. Those are the only columns that you need to worry about entering anything in. So product price, first row here or second row is the t-shirt. So that was 778. Yep. So I'm going to put in 778 under the product cost column for the t-shirt. Let's switch over to shipping here and get the shipping. So it's $4.75 to the US and that's my primary country. So that's what I'm basing all of this on. Of course, if I ship to other countries within that same shipping profile, I need to set the appropriate price for those other countries as well. So we need to put 475 here in the shipping cost column. So that's in there. So our total cost, the spreadsheet is telling us the total cost is $12.53. So now all we need to do is figure out what total price do we need to get in order to get the profit that we want. And you could use uh, an Etsy fee calculator for this as well, but I actually built this spreadsheet so that it calculates the Etsy fees, the H column here. It includes all of the fees that are going to apply, including the 20 cent relisting fee. So all you need to do first is just put in something in the product price column, and then you'll start seeing an estimated profit margin over there on the right. So if, if I put in $24, so in this case, we'd be talking a profit margin of 36% if I can can actually get away with charging $24 for the t-shirt. However, I know I can't. So realistically, now I'm going to back that down. Let's say $22.99 is 34%. All right, that's more reasonable. I'm not going to figure out whether I want to just do free shipping and charge $22.99. I'm going to figure out the same information for the sweatshirt and the hoodie first, and then I'm going to make that decision about free shipping versus charging for shipping, because that's what this is all about. So I need to go back to the Printify catalog and grab the product price and the shipping cost for the sweatshirt and the hoodie. And that one is $13.91 product price and $8.49 shipping price. So $22.40. Let's see what the total price needs to be to get a similar profit margin that I'm comfortable with. So I'm going to put in $36 first, and that is... 27%, not quite high enough. All right, so 38.99 would get me to 31, almost 32% profit margin. So that's the total that I'm looking to get for a sweatshirt. Let's do the hoodie now. All right, so I've got that in there. So 25.33 is my total cost for a hoodie. And so again, I'm gonna just start by guessing here. $42 would get me to 29%, so almost there. Why don't we just do 42.99? That's 30.5%, so perfect. Okay, these are the three products I've got in my combination listing. So if I was gonna do free shipping, I would leave these prices alone. This is what my product prices would be, $22.99, $38.99, $42.99. And those prices will get me the profit margins that I am comfortable with for these products. However, I don't really think those are competitive prices, at least right now. Everything has gotten more expensive. There are a lot more Etsy listings out there with prices in this range. And I do like to do free shipping whenever possible because it just makes the math easier. I, don't, I could basically be done. I, I could stop right now. So if you wanna do that, 
by all means, go ahead and do it. I fully support doing free shipping if you think you can be competitive with the prices that you need. And I could even back down that t-shirt price a little bit. You could probably go to $21.99 here. But let's say that I just know I can't compete with these prices. So I need to back down the product price, which means I'm gonna have to charge for shipping so that the product prices can look lower. What do I actually charge for shipping? The first thing I'm gonna tell you is ignore the actual cost of shipping. Why? Because we already factored it in. We've got the cost of shipping here. We know that what we need to get are these three prices to get the profit margin that we want. Now your profit margin target could be different than mine, that's that's fine. But the point is I don't care what these individual shipping costs are anymore because I've already factored those in to these prices here in column E. They're built in, so as long as I can get that total amount, I don't have to worry about what the actual cost was. Let me just illustrate what I mean here. For example, the shipping cost for the sweatshirt and the hoodie is $8.49. I don't need to charge that. All I need to do is pick what seems to be a reasonable shipping charge and then subtract that amount from my product price that I already figured out. And my profit margin will remain the same. So for example, if I think that $4 is a reasonable shipping charge that nobody will abandon their cart over, all I have to do is put in $4 here in the shipping column. I can even copy it to make it faster. Now all I need to do is subtract $4 from these product prices and it will bring my profit margin back down to where it should be. So there we go. I subtracted $4 from each of my product prices and as you can see in the profit margin column and in the net profit column my profit has remained the same all I'm doing is shifting the money between a product and shipping until the balance looks right to me now the one extra thing to be aware of here is if you opted into the free shipping guarantee any individual product that's priced over $35 is gonna get free shipping anyway so in this example the hoodie right now is priced at $38.99 with $4 shipping no one is ever gonna pay that $4 shipping charge if they buy a hoodie because it's over $35 and I am opted into the free shipping guarantee. So the only way to combat that is to do one of two things. One is riskier than the other. The risky thing to do would be to adjust my shipping price so that it is $34.99, placing it just underneath 35 bucks. So if somebody buys one hoodie, they are gonna pay shipping and I will get the total profit I need. So what I would need to do to get there for this particular product pricing situation would be to increase my price all the way to $8 for shipping. But the reason I say this is risky is that you are shifting an awful lot of what you need to get for your profit into the shipping price. So if somebody buys two products, let's say they bought one t-shirt and one hoodie, now they're definitely not gonna pay for shipping and the what you're going to get without that shipping charge is a lot less because you placed a large amount of money into that shipping price. So your only other option, if you are opting into the free shipping guarantee, is to just do free shipping on the whole listing and kind of go back to where we started because then your shipping cost is built into the price of each product and it does not matter what anybody buys because they're gonna be covering your shipping charge no matter what. And then your last sort of secret option is to just opt out of the free shipping guarantee. If none of this works for you, if you really wanna be able to do uh, what we did a second ago, which was have a reasonable shipping charge and and then a reasonable product price, and uh, and it, maybe it ends up looking like this, $38.99 for a hoodie with $4 shipping. That works, but it doesn't work if you have the free shipping guarantee. So if this is really what you think is the best option for you, then you would have to opt out of the free shipping guarantee because otherwise you will never collect that shipping charge on the hoodie price. And now just to take this through to the last step, once you figure out your free shipping or your shipping pricing strategy for these combination listings, the last thing to do is to actually update your shipping profile that you're gonna use for your combination listings. What I would suggest doing is just use one of your existing shipping profiles if you already have one from this print provider. If you don't, go ahead and just publish one of the products from Printify to your shop as a hidden draft and let it create a new shipping profile. That'll get you a new shipping profile to work with, and it will pull through your print provider's information as far as the origin zip code. And in this example, I use the same print provider for all three products. If you use different print providers for the different products, which you can, just use the origin zip code from the one that is likely to get used the most often or the one that's most centrally located in the US. In my experience, customers aren't even gonna notice. But what we would do is we would come to the shipping settings and that's gonna drop you on your shipping profiles page. Now, for example, I have a shipping profile in here that I already use for individual t-shirt listings. So if we click the edit button to see what that is, I happen to know this one is from Monster Digital. So what I could do is I could use the duplicate 
or copy button here. I could duplicate it. It's gonna give me a copy of it. I can leave the origin zip code alone because that is already monster digital and that's what I want. I personally like to leave the processing time around two to five days, even when I know it's it's gonna be relatively quick because sometimes sweatshirts and hoodies might take a little longer than t-shirts. So I just like to leave that. Now, the important thing to do here is make sure that you've got your countries the way you want them to be. So wherever you intend to sell, make sure the countries are accurate in the shipping profile. But once you've got that correct, then what you wanna do is of course come to the primary country based on all of those numbers that we just figured out and make sure that you set the shipping price based on what you decided on, either free shipping or set your fixed price and uh, and then charge accordingly for that. Now, one other thing I would recommend, you probably wanna go with a slightly higher than usual additional item charge in a combination listing. And that's because when somebody buys more than one product from that same listing, they're gonna get the additional item charge no matter what product it is. Let's, let's go with the uh, example that I used. If your price was $4 and then let's say your additional item was $2, if they buy a t-shirt and a hoodie, they're gonna pay $6 for shipping, but you are going to pay the $4.75 cost for the t-shirt shipping and $8.49 for the hoodie shipping. So your cost is gonna be significantly higher. That's the only scenario where the individual cost you're paying actually matters after you've done this math. Now, what would actually make the math work out in this case would be to do the exact same charge for an additional item as one item, because that is the number we used to factor in to the price for each item in the listing. So now if they bought one t-shirt, one hoodie, they're gonna pay $8 and $8 is what you would have factored into those prices. Now, one additional thing to think about is if somebody does buy an additional product of the same product type, like two t-shirts, you will get the additional product rate from Printify. So you will pay $4.75 and then whatever that additional product price is, which is less. It's kind of a trade-off. If somebody buys two t-shirts, they're going to pay $8 and that actually is too much than they should have to pay for shipping. So you could just go somewhere in the middle knowing that sometimes you'll have two of the same product on an order. Sometimes you'll have one of each and you'll have to pay the first item price for each one. So you could go with something like $3.50 in this example, just to give a little bit of a lower price for the additional item. It'll still cover most of that cost if they bought two different products in the same order. But honestly, nothing really works out perfectly in every scenario other than free shipping. All right, so that's it. That's the process that I go through if I was gonna figure out my shipping prices for a combination listing versus doing free shipping. If you want to use that spreadsheet that I was using that calculates everything for you, there is a Dropbox link down in the description to go get it. Let me know in the comments if this was helpful or if you still have any questions about shipping for combination listings and let us know if you have any tips of your own for other sellers about shipping for these combination listings. Do me a favor and hit that like button if you did find the video helpful so YouTube can show it to more people and don't forget to subscribe to the P OD Insights channel. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.